Hello sweet friends and welcome to my channel crafting with me Indiana Jones and yes today I want candy but I specifically want candy corn I'll bring you some wonderful Halloween DIYs and it's kind of corny with friends Marina of Marina's Corner Craft and Tracy Vanover today we're making a little bit of some candy corn crafts so let's get corny <laughs> As I've mentioned before, I am embracing the primitive Halloween style this Halloween. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I made today, it, that's part of this candy corn collaboration, that I can also include it in my primitive style decor. So here I'm taking some burlap and I'm going to make a giant stuffed, can well it's not giant, but a big candy corn. I would never want to eat a candy corn this size because I would probably get sick. Now. I know that candy corn can be a bit, I don't know, it's its polarizing. That, that candy is polarizing simply because some people love it and some people hate it. I actually love it. I look forward to Halloween and I look forward to having my, can, my jar of candy corn. Now, I love to eat candy corn because it gets very sweet with something a little salty, maybe some peanuts or some cashews or some pretzels. So for today, we're going to celebrate candy corn so I hope you can join us in the celebration of candy corn now of course we're going to have to paint this um, burlap according to the candy corn colors do you know what your candy corn colors are I know it's white yellow and orange and they appear in that way now if you've ever checked out how people make candy corns and candy corns have been around since like the 1800s like the 1880s or something well it's white orange and yellow and it's interesting because I always thought that they would like I don't know they would make different stripes of the oh there's uh, Luna getting into the candy corn colors very curious and I thought that they would like, you know, if you've ever watched how they make candy canes, they have separate lines of the sugar, the melted sugar and white and red, but that's not how it is with the candy corns. They actually use cornstarch, yes, cornstarch, and they make these little molds of uh, the little candy triangles and they drop the sugar in. So first it's white then it cools down a little and then it's orange and yellow and that's how they build up the colors it's really really interesting and that's how they've been doing it for over a hundred years i personally like brocks when they use honey um i don't like it when it's just i don't know when it, it, it different colors different flavors i just like the basic vanilla marshmallow candy corn flavor and those are the flavors it's like vanilla and marshmallow so after i've painted my burlap as you saw I let it dry, preferably for a few hours, and then I'm just going to stitch it together because again, this is primitive, so I'm making sure that I'm using these very big stitches and, and I'm using embroidery floss for this one, and I wanted it to be in black just because it's Halloween, why not? And once I have this all sewn up, and it's kind of, you know, takes time, so take your time and enjoy this. Once it's all sewn up, all I'm going to do is stuff it and I'm just using regular stuffing that you can get. You can also use cotton balls, whatever you have around the house. And then I'm just going to stitch it up and we are done. Now I'm going to embellish this a little more and you'll see it in the final reveal, how cute it all turns out. So this is something fun and easy that you can do with your kids or with anyone and celebrate your love for candy corn. Next, I thought it would be fun to make a candy corn tree. And I, again, I'm going to continue with the primitive style. And here I'm just ripping up this wonderful fabric that I had laying around the house. So if you have any, and it could be any, any kind of like Halloween colored fabric. It could be black, yellow. You can make your own colors for your candy corn tree. But for now, I'm going to stay with the basic colors of this, this kind of orangey yellow. It's not a perfect yellow. It's a, a muted yellow and orange and white the traditional colors for candy corn all i'm doing is using the styrofoam cone that you can get at the dollar tree and you just start building up your colors with your rags and i love this you can also do this with ribbon if you prefer and it's a lot of fun but i love 
this primitive style. So there's my yellow, and it's kind of like a mustardy yellow, so it fits in very well with the colors of the primitive style for Halloween. And then this wonderful orange that is actually has a print of white pumpkins on it, white outlined pumpkins. And then lastly, of course, some white um, burlap fabric that I had. Actually, I think this is um, the, the what is it, the sackcloth or whatever, uh, potato, not potato, but the sackcloth um, uh, fabric that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And I think all of these fabrics I found at the Dollar Tree. Now I'm just adding another layer just to have more texture. I kind of ripped up these parts of these kinds of fabric or these strips of fabric a little more so you can see the fraying and you can see more of that natural primitive look. And once I'm done, I'm going to cover the bottom of the cone so you can't see it. And then I'll place it on a dowel and I'll place it in a little pot. And there is our little cute little Halloween candy corn tree. Now you remember the little witch I made, little pumpkin witch that I made last week. Well, I thought she deserved to have a little companion. So I am creating my own little candy corn man. Because the candy corn can. I don't know. <laughs> there should be a song for him. The candy corn man. The candy corn man. Anyway, here I'm just taking <laughs> this triangle of styrofoam that I just cut out of some thin packing styrofoam that I had around the house. And now I'm going to use this wonderful product, which I love, which is foam clay. And foam clay is so much fun to work with, especially during Halloween. And there's a bunch of colors that you can get your foam clay. And uh, again, it's non-toxic and it's so much fun to work with. So here I'm just flattening it out and I'm going to cover my little triangle. Once I've covered the triangle, I'm just making sure that it's nice and smooth so I can build upon this uh, clay base. If you've never worked with foam clay, I suggest that you start because it's just so much fun to use and very different. Ooh, look at that. It almost looks like there's a ghostly face in there, but don't worry. It's not going to be a spooky face that I'm going to create for this candy corn because after all, I love candy corn. I want it to be a cute, fun, sweet face because candy corn is so sweet. So Mr. Candy Corn, actually, his name is Cornelius. Mr. Cornelius Corn, I don't know what his last name is. Give me a, give me an idea of what to name him as far as his last name. Mr. Cornelius really loves candy corn and he's actually a candy corn farmer. Yes, that's right. Candy corn farmer. And in the world where I have magical pumpkin headed witches, there are candy corn fields out there. And Mr. Cornelius, he is the one that takes care of the candy corn fields in the town. Now, as you can see, I just made these cute little, the, the little cheeks and now I'm making little nose. And this is when I start falling in love with the little characters that I make. I love this so much. Of course, I'm using the clay. I'm going to create a smile and just give it a bit of personality. Now, originally I was going to make him a traveling salesman that sold candy corn. What else? But as I got to know him and I started creating him, I realized that he is a candy corn farmer. And yes, I realized that I told you how candy corn is actually made and when it started being made. But in this world, in my little primitive uh, Halloween world, it is uh, farmed. So the candy corns that aren't eaten from the previous year of Halloween those are harvested. He comes around. So Mr. Cornelius, I got to come up with a last name, but Mr. Cornelius comes around to everybody's homes after Halloween and picks up all the candy corn that some kids may have thrown out or are just left uh, alone to get hard in the, you know, in their containers or in bags or for or the ones that are left over at the stores. Well, he picks them all up, he harvests them by Thanksgiving, and he plants them so that he'll have a nice candy corn crop for the following year. So that's where 
candy corn in my mind actually comes from. I love this idea. I think it would be great. I mean, kids, don't go out there and plant candy corns in your backyard because it's not going to happen. I tried it myself, my children, and it doesn't work. I tried. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine a field of candy corns? I would love that. But anyway, so look at him. I'm falling in love with this little critter. Anyway, now we're going to have to color him. And I thought paint would be too rough. And you can do it any way you'd like if you want to use paint, but I decided to use some eye makeup. So here I'm using my eyeshadow just to recreate the traditional colors, the yellow and orange and white. And I thought it was cute because it's almost as though it's like a little suntan. Of course, he's a farmer. He's going to have a bit of a suntan on him, a little sunburn. And there was little Luna. And there, there look at his little cheeks. They're all sun, sun kissed orange cheeks i think that makes sense and he's just a happy fellow he loves to you know work on on his cornfields as you saw we had a quick inspection there by kuru herself a little black cat you always need a little black cat to help you with halloween diys now i'm not the greatest painter but one thing i have learned is that a character comes to life in their eyes so here I wanted to make some really fun and friendly cute little eyes for Cornelius because I think he's very happy and very proud of being a corn candy corn farmer and I think it shows in his eyes and how he's smiling and happy especially when Halloween is coming around it's a lot of hard work for Cornelius but he's more than happy to supply all the wonderful kids out there with this fun traditional candy after I've created the eyebrows of course I'm just going to outline you know the little uh, lips his smile I think it's so cute and later on I am going to add some freckles I think he really is coming to life unfortunately when I was creating his actual body I don't know what happened I guess I didn't press record but now you'll see how I create the arms for Mr. Cornelius and all I'm doing here is using this beautiful plaid fabric that again I had in my stash and I had gotten it from the Dollar Tree look how perfectly cute to create a nice flannel plaid shirt for Mr. Cornelius as he is gathering up his candy corns to celebrate the Halloween season with all of us now the same as I did before with my cute little witch, I'm using some wires just to be able to position the arms how I'd like to and I'm going to fill the arms with some cotton balls. I'm also going to, be going to create some cute little hands and of course add some magnets to it as well to his hands so that he can you know grab things as well and he can share things with our cute little primitive witch i think i came up with the name of maggie i like maggie and her friend cornelius as they get ready for halloween to celebrate halloween with me their first year with me so i'm really excited about creating more characters for my primitive halloween now let me just show you the body the the top of his body is actually one of those lipton uh, soup mix boxes that's all it is and I just covered it in the same fabric and as you can see here I made a hole so that I can attach the arm and of course I left some wire out so that I can attach the arm and I glued down the shoulder and you really can't tell because of the plaid fabric but look how cute this is once you put it all together now his legs are just some tubes that are just plastic and they're sturdy I get I got a poster from Timu and those are the tubes that I used for his legs. You can also use paper towel rolls if you'd like. That'll be a little thicker but if you cut them and just make them a little smaller it makes it even sturdier so that he can stand up. But look how cute he looks with his little freckles as well. It just put a few little freckles. I thought it was and added a little more to his character. So here I've added both of his arms and now I'm going to finish off his overalls. I used the plain burlap for his overalls and um, I just thought it was so cute. At first I didn't think of making them overalls and then I just added that little square on top and here I am just going to glue it down and then of course we're going to add some buttons to those um, straps on the overall. 
I'm going to connect to my witches, um, my little primitive witch that I made a, a few weeks ago. Here all I'm doing is creating little hands that are magnetized. As you can see I have a little magnet there. And I'm just tying them up with these little rubber bands and a little cotton ball and that's how I'm creating the hands for Mr. Cornelius the same way I did for Maggie the Witch. If you are enjoying this so far, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Now check this out. Look how adorable. Now I'm just, there's a little paw that tried to stop me from gluing down my little button there. I was trying to pet her, but she moved it away. Now all I'm adding here are the cute little buttons, and it just adds so much charm, especially to this cute little corny farmer. Now we all know every good farmer needs a good farming hat to keep the sun out of his eyes and to keep him cool while he's working out in the fields. So here I'm creating one of those starter pots that you get at the Dollar Tree and some burlap and I'm creating a cute little hat for our farmer. Now I'm just adding a few little embellishments, some leaves, some fall leaves and of course a cute little sunflower. I thought this was adorable for the little farmer's hat. Look how cute he is. That little meow was to remind me to tell you about Ali Chen. They reached out to me to offer me a cute little bookshelf and I thought it was perfect for my craft room, but I also thought it would be nice to display all of these wonderful Halloween items that I am creating. As you can see, Kudu is there making sure that I'm opening everything properly. And you have to excuse my floor, it is a mess because I'm still moving things around. And as you can see, I have a collection of vintage Christmas items right behind me. Ali Chen sent this a cute little bookcase for me and it was very easy to assemble. As you can tell, I'm not very mechanical as you can see um luke did step in and help me out quite a bit just because i needed to film this anyway and there is luna making sure that i have included all the parts to this again very simple to assemble it took me like took us like 10 15 minutes to be quite honest and it was ready to go and the most important thing is it's also a perfect unit for cat collections so maybe i'll have a halloween black cat collection on this beautiful bookcase and i look forward to making it a little more annie like in the future thank you again to ali chen more information in the description down below last but not least i thought it would be fun to create a candy corn stock yes because in this world where they grow in fields candy corns come off of a candy corn stalk. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but if you put your candy corns in a circle and build up one circle over another circle over another circle, you can actually create a whole cob of candy corn. And I am so tempted to do that, but it would be, oh gosh, I think you'd get a tummy ache if you ate that many candy corns off of a candy corn cob. Now, after I rolled out my clay, I flattened it out just a little bit just to make it easier for me. Now, it doesn't mean that candy corns are all perfectly flat, but you know, you get my idea. It's more or less this way. And now I'm cutting out the little candy corns with my little spatula. And look how fast and easy this is. It really is so much fun with the foam clay. And if you ever want to make very convincing fake candy corns, I think foam clay is your best way to go. Now, Let's do that traditional coloring once again. Orange in the middle, white on top, and yellow on the bottom. And of course, for this, I did use acrylics because I did want it to look more, how can I say it, like candy corn, that it's like very bright colors. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it came out so cute. So let's make a whole bunch of these because it's going to take a whole bunch to create a candy corn stock. Now for the candy corn stock, all I did was I had my candy corns on wires. Now this is the first time I was wire, I was doing one, so I had only white wire and then I was just covering it with this green tape. But then I found that I did have some green wire and all I'm doing here is adding some glue, like E6000 or that glue that you get at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just poking through my little candy corns. Now my candy corns already had little holes at the bottom because that's how I put them up to dry with some toothpicks, with some very thin toothpicks. And all I'm doing now is building my little corn stalk bit by bit by adding the corn 
to my candy corn to my cut wires so that it would resemble almost like an actual corn stalk. I think this is so cute and what a cool way to incorporate candy corn into your own florals if you did something like this. Now this, I, I like these little yellow fluffy things because it reminds me of the ends of the candy corn or actually of real corn, not candy corn, but of real corn when you look at real corn stalks. And so all I'm doing is adding one by one all of these candy corns to create this corn stalk for my little Cornelius farmer to hold in his hand. I thought this was such a fun step to add and I think it's going to add to my primitive display. So let's take a look and see what it all looks like all together. Thank you once again to our hosts Morena of Morena's Corner Crafts and Tracy Vanover and Tracy Vanover Designs. Please check out both of their channels and all of the channels in this playlist. And thanks to all of you for stopping by. Please, if you enjoy this, like, share, and subscribe. And as I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. And I will see you again very soon for my next Halloween adventure. See you then. Bye.